Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to come before you right now, to come before your throne, Father, to give you praise, to give you worship, to thank you for this day, to thank you for allowing us to give you thanks, Father. We are grateful, Father, for what you've done for us and what you'll continue doing for us, Father. Father, right now we're asking that you touch every intercessor on this line and on, on every other line, Father, that are lifting up your name right now for all the mighty things that you've done for us. Father, we are giving you praise right now for touching us in ways that you're unimaginable, for touching our friends' lives, our family lives, and our co-workers' lives, Father. We are thanking you for the work that you are doing um, on this for this ministry, Father, right now, and every ministry around the world, Lord. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to come to work, Father, and be here among our co-workers, Father, and spread the love and spread the word. Father, we are thanking you for being able to be around our co-workers and friends, Father, to spread the joy that you've placed in our hearts. Lord, we are asking for those right now who are on their way to on, to, on their way to work or home, Father, we're asking that you provide your guidance and love, Father, and let them get to their destination in one piece. And don't allow, Father, any accidents to happen on the road today, Father. Protect our youth, protect our children, Father. Guide them, Father, from the evilness of this world. Father, we are thanking you for our shelter and for the clothing you've provided, Father. We are thanking you, Father, for allowing us to pray for one another. We are thanking you, Father, right now for allowing us to be in each other's lives, Father. Lord, we tell you that we love you, Father. We, we tell you, Father, we thank you again for the meal you've provided to us, Father, for the finances you've provided for us, Father. And for anyone who's going through whatever issues they may be facing, Father, don't let them face it alone. Let them know that you are there with them and you stand firm with them, Father. And when they are looking for a backbone, Father, you be their backbone. We're looking for strength. You be their strength, Father. Let them know that they can fall back on you for whatever issues it is that they may be encountering. Lord, we ask that you bless this ministry in particular, Father, with the work that will reflect you. Let everything that come out of this ministry, Father, be of you and for your glory only. Lord, we are asking that you bless us with finances, you bless us with vision, you bless us with a heart and a passion, a burning passion, Father, to do the work for your glory only. Lord, we tell you that we appreciate we appreciate, we appreciate you allowing us to come on this line right now at 12 noon to hear the message, Father. Let the message touch us. Let us go and be a blessing to someone right now, Father. Let this message be, well, what it is that we need to hear, Father, to light a fire under us to go out there into this world and put the word out there, Father. Lord, we tell you that we love you. We tell you that we appreciate you. It is in Jesus' name that we'll forever pray. Amen. Come on, you ought to say glory right where you are right now. Glory. Come on, one more time, you ought to say glory. glory. The Bible says that if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves, pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. I want to talk about a uh, Christian ban today. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of talk in the news about this executive order that was signed that prohibits immigrate, uh, immigrants from coming into the country. And it's amazing that one signature, one act by one person with authority can block people from coming in to a country. But that's indicative of the believer who has made the same steps to actually watch this now, to sign their own rights away from coming in to the place of promise in the kingdom of God. Some of us have allowed our wicked ways, our lack of faith uh, ways, our ways that are, are discouraging to the kingdom uh, from bringing in people to the kingdom of God. We have allowed all of those ways to take precedence in our lives. We have stopped the migration of the journey of growth from where we started to where we're going. We have slowed that process down. We have stopped the migration from doubt to faith in our lives. We have gotten content with saving faith but we don't embrace the idea of total commitment faith. Uh -huh. The type of faith that we could say that, God, if whatever you want from me, 
I'll give it to you. And then watch this. Here's the next level of that, Sister Marguerite. It's when we would say not only whatever you want from me, but I'll give you the actions that prove that I'm serious about this confession. And so my issue today, God began to speak to me this morning as I was getting ready. He said, we need to elevate. And I, I know we got some people on the line today who have been struggling with their faith and have been going through all type of turmoil and trouble. But if my people, which are called by my name, that's what the Lord is saying to us, would humble themselves, say, Lord, I'm tired of doing it my way. Hear me. Some of you have missed God in certain promises. Why, Sister Marlise? Because we've been trying to do faith our way. We're saying, God, I'm going to give, but I'm only going to give so much. I'm going to invest my time, but I'm only going to invest so much because I need to make sure that it's going to work for me. But I'm talking to the people who have realized the error of their way, and they're tired of being on a hamster wheel of life and seeing that the promises of God seem to be something that, that are preached about but not experienced by you. I just need a few folk. I don't need everybody. I just need a few people who are on the line today to say, you know what, Pastor, I am tired of going through this consistent circle where it looks like I get just a little bit to wet my whistle, but I don't get everything that he's promised me. He's promised me full healing, and all I got is a little relief. He's promised me deliverance, but I still got a little desire. But yet, if you would just let go of your flesh, let go of your thinking, and if we would come together even just for a moment, your Bible says if two or three would gather themselves in the same accord and believe the same thing, God would be in the midst, and he would not only be in the midst, but he would handle the very thing that we're struggling with. And so for those of you that are believing God for the release of resources, why don't you just for one moment Forget about what's in your bank account. Forget what's going to come out today. Forget what you got to pay and just say, Lord, whatever you want, I'm going to give it. Won't you just get past your time schedule and all the hours you got to spend in your job or all the hours you got to spend doing whatever and say, God, whatever you want from me in my time, I'm going to give it. And forget about everybody else that you're helping out with your gifts and your talents and say, Lord, whatever you desire of me, I am willing to let that thing fly for your kingdom. Oh, I wish I had yes. somebody, if I just had just maybe two Amen. people on the line who believe that, that said, you know what, God, I'm, I'm tired of giving you what's left over. Yes, thank you. I, I know that I'm expecting the best from you, but I'm giving you what's left from me. I, I just need just a few people to say, God, I'm emptying out myself today in this moment. This is no longer just a message, but now this is a place where I'm going to connect with God, and I'm going to let go of everything in me. I'm going to give you my time, my talent, my money, all of that, and I'm humbling myself in this moment that you might be God. How about you all do this? Say, listen, here, here's, here's, the, here's the challenge. We're so used to seeing social media challenges. Here's the challenge that I'm giving everybody. Either you're going to believe God or you're not. Either you're going to believe God or you're not. I remember when we first started doing this ministry years ago, I remember we were believing God. We were, we were having a week of uh, uncommon favor and release, and we were believing God and giving our very best seat at the end. I remember this young man, Sister Marguerite, gave his very best seat, and it was about 57 cents. Amen. 57 cent. Can, can y'all say that with me on the line? Say 57 cent. 57 cent. 57 cent. And when he gave the 57 cent, Sister Marlise, do you know that that was the thing that got him out of his sister's house and got him back into a full-time job and got him back into a position where he was able to have his own home again? Amen. 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 Because he was willing to believe. But he is, he, I, I hear you all. It's easy to believe when you ain't got much. But it's easy. It's harder, right? When you got a little bit more and God is asking for it all. The Bible says, how have you robbed me? He said, you robbed me in tithing and offering. How else have you robbed me? You robbed me in time and in talent. We are giving the world the best of us. We're not giving God the best of us. Amen. So today, what do you owe God? 
hear me. Hear me good. I want you all to hear the Spirit of God in this moment. What do you owe God? What do you owe him? What have you failed to give him in your money, in your time, in your talent? What do you owe him? I want each and every one of you on this line, hear me good now. I want you to give God what to do him today. No excuses. Stop living on his grace because you want to walk in his promises. You want to walk in his provision. Then you got to get off his grace intentionally. Grace is a safety net. It's not a pathway. My Lord. Yes. Yeah, Y'all didn't hear me. Uh, Let me say it a little louder. Grace is the net under the pathway. Holiness, righteousness is the path that we walk on. Yes. My Lord. I challenge you today. Go to experiencesubmission.org. Give what God told you to give. I challenge you. Text me or Pastor Chantel and say, this is what I need to give to God concerning my time or my talent. This is what I've been holding back. I challenge you today to trust God. We've been nice up to this point. But God is requiring everything out of you because if you're not paying attention to the news, the world is coming to an immediate uh, transition. And I thank God for all of the leaders. It ain't just one leader. It's all the leaders strategically all across the world to bring about what God has promised in Scripture. Mm -hmm. But that means soon and very soon we're going to encounter God. And he's going to ask for an account of our lives. And what will we be able to tell him? That we gave him everything or we gave him what was convenient. And so, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we declare and decree obedience on this line. God, we have given up everything. God, we have given up jobs. We've given up homes. We've given up places. But yet, God, what are you requiring out of us now? That's what we're willing to give. Everything we have, even right now, stir up our hearts, God, not of manipulation nor of witchcraft, but of your, your spirit speaking to our hearts. What are you requiring of us? What are you requiring us to do? How are you requiring us to serve? God, I'm always going to be reminded of that young man who gave that 57 cent because he gave all he had because he knew God was requiring all of him. But today, you're requiring all again because anytime you require a life, you're going to bring about a change for a generation. Yes. And so, God, let us be willing. Let us be open and obedient in Jesus' name. And so we're declaring and decreeing now supernatural favor today. I'm speaking miracle money. I'm speaking miracle provision over each and every one of you. If you all would be obedient to whatever the Lord is declaring upon you to do today, I want you to go to experiencesubmission.org, give you a very best seat, watch God bless you abundantly. And I want you to meet us back on the line tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. for prayer. Be blessed, beloved, and enjoy.